Good afternoon, it's Dr. Alan Yim. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two things. Types of motion between two voices and parallel motion, which is to be avoided. So let's start with the types of motion. There are five different types. It could be any two voices, soprano and bass, bass and tenor, and so forth. Okay, but let's start with actually the simplest one, which is the voices don't move. And we call this static. So if the notes don't move, we call that static. We could also have one voice move, like this, the same looks up a step, and the other one doesn't move. We call this oblique. Both voices could move in the same direction by different amounts. So let's say one voice, let me make it go down just so you can see this, like this. And one voice might move down like this. So if you notice, let's say this is the soprano and the alto. The alto would be leaping down a third, the soprano steps, but they're going in the same direction. We call this similar. We could also have the voices moving in opposite directions like this. And if this happens, I'll just put the stems on. We call this contrary motion. And finally, we could have the voices move in exactly the same way, the same distance. It could either be stepping or leaping, something like this. And if they move the same distance, we call this parallel. So these are the, the five different types of ways that two voices can move in relation to each other. Now some of these are safe. You never have to worry about it when we're writing in four parts. We're going to see what four part writing is in just a bit. These two on the left, static and oblique, are the best type, well, the safest types of motion to use. Notice that in each of these, there's at least one common tone. So I'm just going to label CT. Okay, if it's static, of course, both chords are going to have the same pitches in those voices. In this one, it's just one common tone. The other one's moving. Okay. Now, what about the other three? Well, the other three you have to be careful with in terms of how the voices move. So let's, let's move on to parallel types of parallel motion. We're going to be writing in a style where we have a four-part chord going to a four-part chord. It's, you could think of it as such as writing for a choir. Suppose I want to move that chord, that C major chord, to a G chord. Let's say we want to go one, five. We can't just move them any old way we want because there are certain guidelines and certain way, think, ways to move that will sound good and other ways that don't sound as good. So let's, before we get into all the details of that, let's look at the types of motion that you are not allowed to do. Suppose you have two voices. The pitches are separated by a, a perfect fifth. And over here, of course, since they moved the same distance, it's also a perfect fifth over there. This is a parallel fifth, whoops, and you are not allowed to do this. You are also not allowed to do a parallel octave. So suppose you had a note um, up here like a C. So this is the same as the bass, and you go down like this. Okay, so This would be parallel fifth, and this would be a parallel octave, and you're not allowed to do that either. So these, these two types of motion are not allowed. Alright, similar motion. You do have to be careful with similar motion. This is the soprano and the bass. In this case, we're ending here a distance of an octave. Now this is actually a couple of octaves, but for purposes of how we're actually going to treat this, you don't count if there's an octave plus an octave, we're just going to count that as an octave. Or if there's an octave and a fifth, We'll just call that a fifth. So don't worry if there's an octave displacement or not. If you have the soprano and the bass voices moving in similar motion, and the soprano leaps, and we end in an octave or a fifth, 
we're going to call this a hidden octave. It's hidden because it's not like a parallel octave where you see an octave going to an octave, but instead the octave kind of appears. You're not allowed to do this. You're also not allowed to leap into a fifth. Kind of the same situation. But let's suppose the soprano was on, I don't know, D, and it leaped up to a G. Then you would be leaping up to a perfect fifth. That's also not allowed. So this is similar motion, I'm uh, sorry, hidden octave or hidden fifth. So there are three conditions for this. One, it's the soprano and the bass. Two, the soprano leaps. And three, it ends in a perfect octave or a perfect fifth between those two voices. We have two more to look at. Suppose you had parallel fifths or octaves. Now keep in mind that there are, the other voices are there, I'm just not writing them in so that you can see what's going on. So suppose the soprano did this. This is a problem because this is an octave and it's an octave between the two voices and it moves like this, right? So this is, it, it's a perfect eighth and this is a parallel octave because those two voices are moving in parallel. But suppose you said, well, what if I do this? What if I change the direction of one of the voices like this? Let's suppose instead of stepping up with the bass, I leap down. We'll ignore the fact for now that it's leaping a seventh because remember, you're not supposed to leap a seventh. So that interval, you probably wouldn't do that. But you could leap a fourth in one voice and a fifth in the other. And if you do this, this is going to be called contrary octaves. It's contrary motion, but it's still the same problem because you're starting with an octave and you're going to another octave. Let me play what this sounds like for you. So in the first case, it sounds like this. And you might all say, well, what's wrong with that? It sounds perfectly okay. In this style of writing, we're trying to make the voices sound independent. In other words, you want to hear the soprano, alto, tenor, and bass individually, as individual voices. You don't want them to lose their identity because by having them identified as a separate voice, the music sounds full and it sounds uh, richer. When, the vo when two voices move like this in unison, suddenly the texture goes down to three voices and it becomes thinner sounding. So you don't want that. You also don't want this, so the opposite. That's contrary octaves, okay? Neither of those sound particularly good. Let's take a look at what parallel octaves sound like. Well, we know that. Okay, so parallel octaves. So what am I playing? Uh, I'll just highlight that right now for you. The parallel octave is this, in the bass and the soprano. And to add on to that, if the tenor were to move the way it does. So here's the tenor with the bass. They're singing this. Okay, so. Very bad. That would be a sound that maybe you would hear in the Middle Ages, uh, what was called parallel organum. In other words, parallel parts. And the voices are not, they have no independence. You hear something like that, you know what sounds cool, maybe. Um, some in in metal, you call this a power chord, right? But there's no independence of the voices, so this was sort of a naive way of writing. Um, okay, let's look at the last one here. This the similar motion, but um, that leads to a hidden octave. Notice again. Whoops, the soprano is leaping, and the bass is stepping, but it's ending on an octave. So bass and soprano sounds like this. Actually, it's more likely that more likely for the soprano to be on a G, but okay. So you don't want to do that either. There's one final type of parallel that is not allowed. Unequal fifths. So this is a very, very specific case. You probably won't see this too often. One of the voices is going to be the bass. 
is going to move from a diminished fifth to a perfect fifth. It's a type of parallel motion, but it's not exactly parallel. Because if you notice, the bass is moving a half step, and the soprano, or the yes, the soprano, is moving a whole step. Okay, and this is what it sounds like. These are unequal fifths. Okay, sounds a little bit like the hidden fifth. But in this case, the soprano is stepping. Go ahead and review these five types of motion. Make sure you understand these five types. And then take a look at the different types of motion that are not allowed. We're going to be analyzing music by looking at the types of motion in it. And we're going to be writing, hopefully avoiding these pitfalls, these parallels which reduce the texture of the music, and for the style we're writing, which would be something like a Bach chorale, we're going to try to make it sound as rich and full as possible, making the best use of all of the voices that are available. Thanks for watching this. Have a wonderful day.